Should you swap your Tora Harley Davidson for a soft tail? I'll tell you all about it inside. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I hope you enjoy the channel and this series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave loads of comments below, and check out the website revelatoralpha.com. So, in this video, I'm talking about you as a Harley Davidson owner. Which bike should you? consider as your next bike or should you trade in your Tora that you've got and actually downsize if you if you want to use that term to a soft tail actually should you just not even go for the Toras or if you have a Tora sell the Tora and go and buy a sport glide which I ride which is a kind of a I suppose a mini bagger if you like now, there are some people who I know, there are people who watch this channel who have done exactly that. They've contacted me directly, they've left messages, uh, left comments, and said, yes, I actually got rid of my Tora and I actually went for a Sport Glide because it's a better overall package. What is it that I think makes the Sport Glide, in particular of the soft hair range, a better option for those who might go for the, the Tora package, the Tora motorcycles. Well, one, you've got the same power, powertrain there, okay, same engine. Uh, most of the Tora's are using the 114 engine, I believe, a couple of using still the 107 as well. Well, all the soft tails are using either 107 or 114. Similar kind of power, yeah, maybe some f slight different tuning on the uh, Tora models, but essentially power delivery is going to be virtually the same. The one big disadvantage that the Tauras have over the uh, soft tails in terms of performance is their weight. In some cases, they're as shipped or even as in running order, a wet weight if you like, they're over 100 kilos greater than some of the soft tails. That's 100 kilos, that's me, basically. Okay, so whilst there is enough power, I'm convinced within the 107 and the 114, as a stock engine here, I'm not even talking about performance upgrades, as a stock engine, to be enable for you to ride that bike, that Tora bike comfortably, and to be able to load it up, load the panniers up, the boxes up, carry lots, you even go for tour packs or, or whatever you want to do, you know, strap a tent to it, strap, you know, your wardrobe to it full of your clothes, even the kitchen sink. I'm, there's no doubt it's got the power there. And you'll ride two up comfortably and you'll go for a tour all around the country. But would you be best served with a small, with a, with a sport glide, for example, or let's say a heritage or something like that, you know, that, that's got the panniers there or the soft luggage there. And you'd have better power to weight ratio. You'd have a, a bike that is more slimline, let's say, in a stock configuration. It's more, it's more agile. It's, it's lighter, especially if you're having trouble uh, physically of the demands of holding up a bigger bike. Because you can get yourself into trouble. Uh, you know, even, even somebody who's really fit and able if you put your foot down, uh, you know, in a precarious position, you could easily lose the bike. The heavier the bike, the more, more momentum there's going to be, you know, you could easily drop it. It's how many people drop their bikes because they find them just too heavy when those crunch points. I would say, possibly, anecdotally, I have no evidence to support this, I would say that less people drop their soft tails as they do drop their, their Tauras, possibly. They are big machines, aren't they? Well, actually, underneath the bike is relatively sim uh, similar. It's just everything else on it, the fairing, the, you know, the boxes, whatever. It makes it appear to be a bigger bike. Look, they are Tauras for a reason, because you want to go on a tour, and they've got everything else, all the little comforts on there, better seating, more comfortable seating, no doubt, as a stock bike. Uh, you know, the the entertainment system, the info systems, you know, are better. No doubt, obviously it depends on which bike you got. 
Some of these, I'm looking at the Taurus right now, some of them are actually really nice bikes. Um, I particularly like the Street Glide Special. I particularly like the Electro Glide. In fact, that Electro Glide is really, really nice. I think the 2020 spec on it uh, is actually really nice. I think it's got that, uh, was it the RS DS? The traction control, basically. A standard on that one, or is it a stand on the other? Let me know in the comments below if I've got that right or ask about face, but you know what I mean. You know, a lot of people go for the Road Glide Limiteds or the Road Glide Specials. You know, I just spent some time in Florida and, you know, it was pretty much a one stretch of road. It's wall to wall, you know, Road Glides. You know, very popular bike, uh, you know, in the United States. In fact, the Taurus have been the biggest selling bike in the United States for the last two years. And it seems as if it's going to be that way. Everybody wants a bagger. Everybody wants a tour. Well, not everybody, but you know what I mean. There is a bigger percentage of people coming out wanting that bag. It seems bigger is better. More people want it. But I think from my point of view, I'd like to roll up to, you know, a bar, you know, on, on a sport glide. I'd want to be different from the crowd. I don't want to be you know, exactly the same as another 100 bikes, no matter how beautiful, how fantastic they are, because they are great bikes. I'm not saying, I'm not here to slate off a tour and say that's a crap bike. It isn't, they're fantastic bikes, I love them. But I just want to be different. And I also want the attributes of those bikes, but I want better performance, or I think will give me better performance. Now, is there really a need to have better performance on a soft tail than on a Tora. They've both got enough power to get past traffic. They've both got enough power to easily do the highway speeds and the long distances, so on and so forth. Possibly where the soft tail comes into its own is if you have to get in, you know, in tighter spaces through traffic. Now, obviously bearing in mind here, I'm talking about different parts of the world. Let's say in the UK, we allow filtering or lane splitting certain states they allow it many states they don't we have very tight roads over here and narrow roads in some cases in the uk and all around europe in the united states for example certainly the main arteries they're huge aren't they and it's only until you make a direct comparison to, ca direct comparison between that road network in the united states or canada or places like that and our road system uh in europe or maybe into the you know far east and then you really notice the difference so you know there are there are certain bikes that will be suited more to you know certain types of road or riding at quieter periods or just being stuck in particular you know going with the flow of traffic a Tora will do that, no doubt. You know, and you'll have as much fun on a Tora as you would on a, on a soft tail. But I think there's, you know, you, soft tails are cheaper. They're, they're smaller, let's say narrower. They're, they're lighter, better power to weight uh, ratio. It depends on who you're carrying with you. If you normally ride by yourself or do you need a Tora? Maybe you'd be better off with a soft tail anyway. Or do you always go two up? Well, maybe be better with a Tora. It really depends. Are you traveling really long distances all the time? Or is it only very occasionally? The Sport Glide, for example, and the Heritage are very good uh, touring bikes. Yes, you've got the Street Bob, the Fat Bob. They're not touring bikes, let's face it. You can, you can tour on any bike, but they're not really. Same, same with the you know, FXDR or the low ride rest. You know, they're not touring bikes, but you can, you can do anything. The Deluxe, you know, we've forgotten about the Deluxe. Great bike. Great bike, you know, to get two people up there and just, you know, ride along. Obviously, you know, different seating configurations and all that kind of stuff that being a given. So I'm wondering why wouldn't more people come away from buying this Tora, buying this bagger, this stock bagger, and doing away with that and coming to the soft tail, coming to the Sport Glide in particular, which has all the attributes, all the qualities of a good Tora, and it is a good Tora, and is a very capable Tora, especially if you put a tour pack on it. It's, you know. There are so many people who, who have actually bought sport glides and who have actually tried, not tried to, but they've enhanced it, they've modified it with 
the bigger fairings because that's one of the big criticisms from the touring crowd and the, the sport glide is that the fairing isn't big enough well they just put a bigger fairing on it put a bat wing on it and away you go you know taller windshield yeah, anything can be adapted you can put a sound system on there you can put infotainment on there you can do whatever you need to do but ultimately you're going to have a bike that is possibly lighter it depends what you start adding on to it but, but it's going to be cheaper to a certain degree but stock bike to stock bike is definitely cheaper but let me know what you think. I mean, I think that a lot of people, I think there will be a lot of people. I think it's very fashionable. It has been very fashionable to go for these, um, you know, these road glides, you know, ultra glides, road kings. You know, road kings had some great times on road kings. Love that bike in terms of comfort and just, you know, cruising around. Love it. But not, not the bike that I would necessarily buy. You know, the Street Glide Special, again, I do, I'm looking at the picture now, the Street Glide Special, that's a really nice bike. And the Electric Glide Standard, <laughs> I just think it's really nice. It's a lovely bike. But would I necessarily want one, even if I was living in the United States? I don't think I would. I'd be very tempted, don't get me wrong. But I'd rather have something, as I say, that is stands out. And maybe, I think, because it has been a fashion in the last few years, you know, even the UK to start thinking about these uh, bigger bikes, actually, don't need it. Don't want it. Less is more, in many ways. But let me know what you think. Let me know if, if you are a Tora rider, if you ride one of these bikes, what do you think? Would you ever consider downsizing, if you like? Would you ever consider going to a sport glide, going to a soft tail? You know, moving away from the rest of the pack and just doing, you know, your own thing. Well, you know, obviously you've got the Torah because you love the Torah, of course. So it's, you know, I, I could almost expect the answer. No, I'm not going to get rid of my Torah because I love it. And that, you know, that soft tail is for, you know, for people who don't like Torahs, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, I just wonder if there's some, even some kind of acceptance amongst the Toro crowd, whether actually the Toro is just too big, you just don't need it. It's overdoing something that you really don't need to do. And maybe just stripping it back is a lot better. And you've got a really good, good alternative there in the soft tail range, which is the Sport Glide, which will still fulfill those needs that you wanted out of the Toro. Same for the other, other way. Would many of you who are soft tail riders, would you go to a Tora? Would you be lured by that kind of, yeah, I'm going to go for the big bike and the big fairing and the infotainment and all that kind of stuff? There is no doubt some, there are certain aspects of it that are very appealing. I, I, will, uh, I will say that. But I would still say it's not for me. Because I like a bike that is lighter, more nimble. That's one of the things that attracted me to the Sport Glide in itself. Although it appears to be quite relatively big and it's got all the vers versatility of, you know, um, a Tora, but you can strip it down to be like a, you know, a cruiser, you know, or a bobber if you like. Fundamentally, it is a light bike to ride. It's very nimble. That's what I like about it. But let me know what you think. Which, whichever side of the fence you sit on, the soft tail or the Toro side, let me know what you think. Should there be a crossover? Should Tora's move to a, a Sport Glide? Should it, maybe a Sport Glide rider move to a Tora? Let me know. I think they should come down. I think you, you're going to get more fun from, from, from a Sport Glide than you would on a Tora. But that's just my opinion. But I would say that because I'm a sport glide rider, right? Let me know what you think. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave loads of comments below. Check out the website, revelatoralf.com. I'll catch you on the next video. I'm going to do a bit more looking at tourists here because they're really cool. Uh, but, the, but then I'm going to look at my, yeah, my sport glide. Yeah. Eh, ne, ne, yeah, very appealing. But I still like the sport glide. Catch you on the next video. Ta-da.